Radio Prep is the fastest and most effective program to study for your ham radio license. Our complete multimedia course makes it easy to pass the ham radio license test, even if you're a beginner. Study at your own pace with 10 step-by-step lessons that are simple to understand and cover all of the official FCC questions. Take our course and you'll pass the exam on your first try or your money back, guaranteed. Begin your journey to becoming a licensed ham radio operator. And there we are. Good afternoon. I show it's noon in Texas. And, uh, you know, it's it's cloudy today. It's not as hot as it has. It was hot yesterday. It was hot the day before. I suspect we're not going to have any relief for field day in a week and a half. <laughs> I suspect it's going to be hot the whole time. But that's okay. That is field day in Texas. You guys up north who have field day and it's 60, 70 degrees outside, be thankful. So thanks for joining the live stream today, Ham Radio 2.0 Lunchtime live stream. We do this at noon on Wednesday, pretty much every week. I think I missed last week. Was it last week, the week before? I don't remember. But um, but we do this pretty much every week, and I'm um, going to try to get some good topics for you guys upcoming. Today we're going to be talking about Field Day, which is not this coming weekend, but the following weekend. It's about 10 days from now. It's the last weekend. It's always the last full weekend in June. In uh, the USA, it's uh, affiliated with ARRL, ARRL Field Day, and the ob- the objective of Field Day is to make as many contacts as you can with as many different ARRL sections as you can. Anybody outside of the USA is considered one section for DX, and then inside of the USA, you've got sections like North Texas, South Texas, West Texas, Oklahoma is a section, Western PA, uh South Central Florida, I think. There's a bunch of them. I don't know. There's like 80, 60 or 80 different sections. So if you've never done field day before, it's a great opportunity. Find a, a club local near you. I'm going to talk about one of them here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area here in just a second. If you've just recently got your license or even if you're thinking about getting your license, field day is a great time to get out and associate with some other ham radio operators in your area and also to get on the air because you can operate under the club call sign. As long as there's someone from the club there with you, you can operate under the club call sign. You can kind of see what it's all about to be on HF and make make contacts all over the United States and Canada, South America, overseas and whatnot. So it's a fun time to get on the air for the first time on HF if you've never done it before. And you're there being supervised or helped along by someone who has experience so they can kind of show you the ropes and what to do, where to go, what to say, that kind of thing. So it's a really great event to get people on the air and just to get some activities on the air. So special shout out to all of the folks in the chat today who are green text in their name. Uh, Tom Stuver, if I'm saying your name name right, KB8DXN, uh, Michael, KD8GIG, or GIJ rather, Ed, AC3IK, all you folks are my Patrons, Dean, KQ480J, thank you for being here. Ham Radio for non-techies, Scott, thank for being here. Uh, not patrons, I say patrons, I said patrons. Those are you guys are my YouTube channel members. That's how you get your name in green text. Mech Teacher, thank you for being here. So appreciate the support of the channel. Uh, we are going to do, the, for those of you at the top tier of the YouTube channel membership, we're doing our next meeting tomorrow night. So I posted about that on Patreon this morning, and I'll be I'll I'll put a post up on my community tab for those of you in the top tier of my YouTube channel membership today. I meant to do that this morning, I forgot, so that's my fault. I'll, I'll get that taken care of for you. So let us go over here real quick. A couple of uh, quick announcements. I announced this the other day. My June giveaway is going to be for three different winners of three different AA1500 rig expert antenna analyzers. Sign up at hr2.li slash free rig expert. I think that's it. Yeah, free rig expert, hr2.li, free rig expert. Make sure I got that. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so I'll share that link in the chat right now. Boom, right there. So hr2.li slash free rig expert. We will give those away on the channel the night of uh, Sunday, a week from Sunday. So the, uh, typically try to do that the last weekend of the month, and that happens to be field day weekend this year. So I'm going to come home from field day, throw my stuff in the garage, come out here and get on the live stream and give away some antenna analyzers. So that's going to be fun. Uh, let's see. So free rig expert. 
uh, hr2.li slash free rig expert and go sign up for that. Three different winners. I might try to get some nano VNAs from Roger at RNL. I keep meaning to, to email him. He's usually pretty good about if he's got them in stock. He's usually pretty open with allowing us to give one or two of those away. So I'm going to try to get some other stuff in there too. But uh, go to that link and uh, be sure to sign up. So this coming Saturday, I'm actually in town this weekend. So what do you know? I'm in town this weekend. Next weekend, I'll be at Field Day. This weekend, I'm in town. So this uh, this Saturday is an event called Rigs and Coffee, and it's being put on by these nice folks out at Genesis Overland. You can go on, if you're on Facebook, you can go find Genesis Overland. It's a group on Facebook. And they're just going to get together and talk about, come join North Texas Overlanders, adventure travelers, 4x4 enthusiasts at the Cabela's and Allen as we network and share future adventure plans. So I thought this might be a cool time to kind of connect with some overlanders in my area, try to get, I've never done any events or meetups. They put events up two or three times a year. And the last one, I think I was out of town. So I'm going to try to connect with these guys this weekend. And I'm, I'm putting it out here today because if you're in the area, if you're in the North Texas area and you're kind of somewhat a little bit in, interested in this type of event and maybe going out overlanding or camping at some point in the future, um, I invite you to come join me today or uh, on Saturday and uh, let me know you know, um, if you if you think that'd be fun, if you want to hang out. it's The event's from like 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. I don't really plan to stay there the whole time. I'll probably stay a couple hours or so. I want to record some videos for my new uh, Unplugged channel. My new, those of you who don't know, in fact, let me let me pull that up right now. For those of you who don't know, uh, let me let me put this event in the chat. Uh, boom, link copied. Okay, I'm going to put that in the chat right there. And for those who don't know about my new channel, it is right here. I'll put that in the chat as well. And I started a new channel on YouTube called Unplugged. It's about off-grid living, overlanding, RV life, van life, that kind of thing. It hadn't really formed its sea legs yet. I think it's probably going to be more about RV life at this point because those are my most popular videos out of all the videos I've put up. I've put up like eight different videos, and the ones that get the most watch time are the RV life videos. So... That is what, um, that's what I'm, so I want to go to this, this rig and coffee, rigs and coffee event to, um, thank you, Steve. I want to go to this rigs and coffee event so that, um, I can kind of meet up with some people, get my name out there, um, find out about some events and get some, get some video footage for the new channel. Afterwards, my wife is... She's trying to figure out her schedule right now, so we don't know if 100% we're going to do this, but Dallas Pets Alive is hosting a dog adoption event or like a meet and greet something at a local brewery in Salina called Roller Town Beer Works. It's about a 15-minute drive from Allen, which is where the Riggs and Coffee thing is, from the Cabela's in Allen. So we're thinking about going up here, and this, this event's from 1 to 3, so the Riggs and Coffee thing's from 9 to 1. This is from 1 to 3, so we're thinking about just kind of going up there and hanging out for a little bit, or maybe it's noon to three, something like that. Anyway, the like I said, I wasn't going to stay at the at the um, Riggs and Coffee for the entire four hours. So go to the Riggs and Coffee thing, hang out with some overlanders, go uh, up here for uh, the day and, and hang out with some other people and have, have a beer or two for lunch. I think they have food there uh, and that kind of thing. So rollertownbeerworks.com is where that is going to be. My wife is trying to get her schedule rearranged to be able to host the dog adoption event. I don't know if that's going to happen or, or not. Um, and if we go to Riggs and Coffee and no one's interested in going up there, maybe we'll skip the beer works. But, um, you know, some activities happening this weekend. So come out and see us if you are in the area. <laughs> there we go. I hope Roller Town is in, is about a roller derby. I doubt it, but you never know. All right, speaking of Kyle, Kyle's trivia and the Ham Radio Happy Hour are both this weekend. So, Kyle, drop a link in the chat to your trivia. You've got admin privileges. Go ahead and do that. So the trivia will start at 7 p.m. on – let me give Kyle a thumbs up right there. The, Andy Callie's first, just as, so everyone just so everyone knows that. <laughs> uh, the trivia will start at 7 p.m. Texas time, Central time. That's uh, midnight UTC, midnight uh, Friday uh, – Saturday morning, midnight – That'll start, and then an hour later, and that'll go for an hour, and then an hour later, we are going to have our June Ham Radio Happy Hour. So, got uh, got one or two special guests that I've invited to this Ham Radio Happy Hour, and looking forward to it. Should be a really fun show. Uh, that link is already on my channel, so you can go out, just go to my channel. You can find that link, bookmark it, put it on your calendar, 
and uh, be sure to uh, check that out this weekend, this this coming sa- uh, Friday, two days from now. So this is the weekend before field day. So speaking of field day, I was asked to share this by one of the local clubs. If you are in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, let me see if I can move that over a little bit. If you're in the Dallas-Fort Worth area and you want to experience field day uh, around the Mid-Cities area, the uh, Northeast Tarrant Amateur Radio Club is going to do field day at the Bessie Mitchell facility on Ball Street in Grapevine, Saturday, June 25th, at 1 p.m. until Sunday at 1 p.m., which is field day time. Field day goes for 24 hours. It's 1 o'clock Texas time Saturday to 1 o'clock Texas time on Sunday, which I think is uh, 1,800 UTC to 1,800 UTC. Uh, So talk in frequencies 145.4. They're a repeater, Northeast Tarrant Amateur Radio Club, so you can go hang out with them if you are in the area. I will not be here. We are hosting our. We are going back to my hunting lease, and we as we've done for the last three or four years. If you are someone who's been to my field day before, or you're maybe interested in coming, the problem with my hunting lease problem is I have limited space for people to stay. And last winter field day, we were full. Now we had one or two people that didn't show up, so it worked out okay because I ran out of beds. But uh, I don't think we have quite as many people this time. But we do have limited space up there, so. Um, so I'd like to invite everybody out. I would like to have 100 people there. It'd be really fun. I just can't do that because of the limited sleeping arrangements that we have. So maybe one of these years, I'll figure out a way to if just invite RV people. Say, if you, want, you got an RV, you got an overlanding camper, you got some sort of trailer you want to sleep in, um, maybe I'll do that, but I'm not doing that this year. So, But if uh, Northeast Tarrant Amateur Radio Club uh, is doing this, and we'll be, and I, I'll find a link for that. This is the PDF they that I downloaded from them. So I'll put a link in in the description of the YouTube video if you want to go check that out. So today, all of that, there's a lot of announcements. I'm sorry about that. But there's a lot of cool stuff happening this weekend. And then, of course, field day is happening two weeks from now. So today I wanted to talk about field day preparation. And mostly what I want to do is share it on my, share my, um, Amazon store that I spun up. Well, I, I, I've had Amazon store for a while, but I created a new category in Amazon store and I called it um, Field Day 2022 Prep. And I want to share that with you guys today. Now, let me say this up front to make sure I cross all the, cross all the t, uh, T's and dot all the I's for Amazon. My Amazon store is an Amazon associate store and I can earn link, uh, I, gosh, I can earn commissions from qualify I can earn commissions from qualifying links is what I'm trying to say okay so anything today that you click on and I'll put I'll drop the uh, link to my Amazon store in the chat right now uh, that does it doesn't cost you anything to use my Amazon links as opposed to going just amazon.com but it does help the channel grow and it does help um, to um, it support helps supports the channel helps to support the channel and I'm trying to do two things at once here. That's why I'm kind of flubbering around. So if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to, you don't want to click on my link, that's okay. Just go to Amazon.com and follow along with what we're doing right here. But if you go to the link that I just shared in the chat and scroll down right here, I created this Field Day 2022, and these are the items, and that's pretty much yeah, that's good. These are the items that I have put in my Amazon store. Let me see if I can. Move that up a little bit. There, There's that. Okay, it's a little bit better. Right there. These items right here. Now, these are just some tools. You're going to want to know... You're going to want to make sure you have the right tool. So, stuff you don't think about. I mean, say, well, I got my radio coax and antenna. Great. Great. I mean, you know, obviously you want to take a radio to field day. Okay. But the stuff I always forget is some of the stuff on here. Yeah, I got this Hack- Hacko, Hako soldering station. These are really cool. Not real portable but it's not heavy it's kind of small um so those are good uh those are good soldering stations got some crimping tools uh these are really some awning of some sort you know go to if you have an academy sports and outdoors near you go to academy and buy one of their awnings they're about the same price you don't have to wait for shipping you can pick it up that day uh but some sort of awning sunshade 
is very beneficial if you're in an area like we're, like where we'll be actually in a field in Texas underneath the sun. So that will be helpful. I got these small what's called an S beaner or a double sided carabiner. Those are those are good. Actual solder. You know the thing I always forget at field day is connectors. We have uh, or adapters. You can have like BNC to PL two fifty nine. Or BNC to SO239, BNC male and female to SO239. Those are the things that I normally forget. So I haven't added those in here yet, but I'm going to go find some of those to put in here. Uh, this right here, these are, I've not used these yet, but I've got a similar set of these. These are longer, sturdier stakes than just the little dinky ones that come with your, like your tent. And these stakes, I, we used some of these at the POTA event in July at Lake Ray Roberts last last July, just, um, I'm sorry, not July, April, last April, about a couple months ago. And these work so much better than those shorter stakes that come with the tent. I'm like, you know, I need to get some of these stakes to hold down my, my Mastworks tripod that'll have the hex beam on top of it, and maybe even my gazelle tent, which I'll have the gazelle tent set up, or the, the gazebo, the gazelle gazebo tent set up so that we can, it's got screens on all sides of it, so it's, it allows the breeze in there, but it keeps the sun off your head. That kind of thing. So these these rebar type stakes with the hook at the top make for really good tie downs for uh, for, for paracord or or tents or even uh, like a like an awning like we just looked at something like that. You want to tie your um you want to uh, guide down your your intent depending on what antenna you're using your your tripod whatever like that. Those are really good. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Okay. So Tom says that uh, you need to add those large wet wipe camp shower towels for sweaty folks. Hams get ripe in the sun. Yes, very true. Okay. I got to add, uh, give me a second here. Oh, 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 screen capture. Nope. Oh, there it is, window capture. All right, I don't know what happened to that, but that's okay. All right, no, no problem, no problem. So, yes, yeah, wet wipes are a good idea. Um, <laughs> you know, we got RVs out there, and we got an outhouse out there, and so toilet paper is something that you're going to want, want to bring. Last year, last winter field day, I think like four or five people brought a six-pack of toilet paper, so now I've got <laughs> no room for it. But if there's ever another toilet paper shortage... We'll be okay at the deer lease. I'm just going to put it that way. So these Iceco refrigerators are nice. I've got one of these. I think it's this. Yeah, this is the size I've got. This VL45. They run on 12 or 12 volts or 120 volt AC, whichever. Um, so we're going to have one of these plugged into a, a battery. I'm going to have a full solar system put up this year because I got some solar panels that I'm supposed to be testing and uh, and giving a review on and uh, some charge controllers. And so I want to plug stuff into it to test and this this ice co fridge is going to be one of those things i plug into it so that's um that's going to be nice there and uh these oh okay this this is really cool this is something i found on a van life channel i was looking at okay this is the this is a magnet with this um this mopika pro on the back side and the underside that you can't see right now is a magnet, and it sticks to the bottom of your propane tank on the front of your... I mean, you could put it on a barbecue grill, I guess. Any propane tank. I put it on my RV trailer, okay? And then it Bluetooths to your phone. You download the free Mopeka app. It Bluetooths to your phone, and it tells you how much propane you have left in your tank. That is, like, the coolest thing ever. It's like... so Because I have these manual gauges on the front of my old trailer... That kind of tells the pressure that's in the tank. And they're they're kind of somewhat a little bit accurate, you know. If it says half a tank, then I might have a third or two-thirds of a tank, something like that. They're, it's better than nothing, but this thing's a lot more accurate than that. I used it when we went out to Big Ben last uh, in March and um, uh, or April, whenever that was. And I, got, I put it on the tank, and I, I ran the heater a couple nights because it was a little bit chilly at night. And uh, in the morning, I got I had the propane tank was it showing at ninety nine percent? Okay, cool. In the morning I got up, it was at like ninety seven percent. By the time that trip was done, we were at about eighty nine percent. So we used about ten, maybe eleven percent of the propane in the tank. And I'm like, okay, now I know how much propane my heater needs to run all night long when it's you know thirty five, forty degrees outside. Not too, not too terribly cold. But uh, oh, look at that! 
we got some bots in the chat. Hide user on this channel. So thank you, uh, thank you, Izzo. Appreciate uh, you being out there and clicking on that. But anyway, but this I thought this thing was really cool. I was watching this Van Life channel, and she she starts talking about this Mopika. She's like, yeah, it does this and this. And I'm like, where has this been all my life? I need one of these. So that's on my trailer right now, and I'm going to uh, going to be talking about that in some more videos upcoming as well, probably on the other channel. This LED lenser flashlight here, um, once again, this link is... Let me go here and go... No, right there. This link is my Amazon store link. You guys can just go Google for, the, or just search Amazon for this, not Google. If you don't want to use my store link, that's totally okay. But my store link does earn me commissions on, on qualifying items. I just want to reiterate that, said that a minute ago. This LED lenser, these guys were at the Moore Expo that Kyle and I attended in uh, Springfield, Missouri in, in early April. And he's got some really cool flashlights. He's got some headlamps. If you search uh, LED lenser on Amazon, or, yeah, on Amazon, he's got this stuff. And he gave me two or, threes to, uh, two or three of these things. I've got this, uh, this warm white camping lantern. That's kind of cool. I've got one of these headlamps. I think it's this small one right here. And, uh, and this this PR5 core rechargeable flashlight. It's got USB rechargeable little battery. I think it's the 18650 battery, if I'm not mistaken, that you can take out of it. You can charge the battery in an external source, put it back in, charge it via USB. They're very bright, very good for uh, for camping and outdoor after the sun goes down. So this LED lenser company, I was really happy with the quality of lights that, uh, that he was showing at the show and that he also... Um, you know, he, he he donated a couple to me and said, you don't have to do a video with him, but I got my ham radio license because of you, and here is a thank you. And I'm like, hey, man, that's cool. I appreciate that. So really nice guy to, to hang out with and, and talk to. So these are some things that, um, <laughs> you know, your channel has made it when the bots invade. Boy, that's no lie. So these are some really cool things that I have found so far. I'm going to be adding to this list as time goes on uh, between now and next weekend of stuff that is, you know, advisable and maybe I'm trying to I'm trying to figure out my screen here. Advisable and um, you know, kind of uh field day field day would have a good place at field day. Some people aren't doing field day in the field. We're doing field day in the field. We're going to be at my hunting lease where we've been for the last 3 or 4 years. Uh, there's no water out there. There's no electricity out there. So we bring generators. We run on battery power. Uh, we bring in our own water and fill up the, the RV tanks with it. So, that's, in fact, I'm doing some of that tomorrow. So um, so we're going to do some stuff like that. But we're actually in the field and um, doing actual field day in the field, which is which is really cool. So it's a fun time to do, and, and I really enjoy it. And I'm appreciative to all the folks out there who uh, who join us. So, okay. Do any of those lights... Okay, I got my I got my thing... I, I got my screen cap fixed. Okay, do any of those lights do a red light? Red is less attractive for bugs. Yes, that is very true. I think all of them have lenses that you can switch. And they're all LEDs. So I haven't, I haven't fully investigated all the headlamps yet. My pocket flashlight, this PR5, does not have a red option. It has three different brightness settings, and that's it. I think some of the LED... I think some of the headlamps have different... Uh, colors, red and green, maybe. I don't know. I haven't uh, dove into those yet, so I'm not sure. Um, field Day t-shirt got here last week. F coffee mugs, all I need. That's good. I never buy a Field Day t-shirt because every time I go by the booth at Hamvention, they don't have my size. <laughs> That's all right. I got to give Steve uh, K5 ATA a, a hard time about that. So what are some things that you guys think that we should add to this list? I said connectors earlier, so let me go in here and, and add some connectors. because or adapt, I say connectors. I mean adapters like um, BNC to RCA. We don't need that. SMA, uh, PL259. Let's go in here. So these are some cheap, like Amazon-esque type. I've used these before. These are some cheap type adapters. You know, you can get, uh, this is BNC Mail to SO239. This is really good if you're using like an InFed Half Wave that's BNC or any of the Buddy Pole stuff is BNC. You know, the Buddy Stick Pro is BNC. The Buddy Hex is BNC. So these are really good. I suggest, these are cheap adapters. 
I suggest buying two or three of them because if you have one fail on you, which I've had happen before, you have an extra one. Okay, throw the old one away. If, if you test it and you're like, man, there's something wrong in my coax, my adapter, and you figure out it's the adapter, take it, throw it in the trash so that you don't have it anymore and get another one, and that way you can get back on the air. So, um, so ad connectors, adapters are a good thing to have at field day. These right here, those are okay. Uh, let's see. That's the same thing again. But if you want the best coax adapters, honestly, those... Uh, Amphenol makes really good uh, adapters and, and PL259s. Those Mezzi and Poloni ones are very, very good. I don't know if you ordered those now, if you'd get them in time for field day. It's possible you would. Um, we can, if we go here, we go to Messi.it. By the way, if you guys didn't know, you can go to Messi.it, uh, which is the, uh, .it is, is Italy. And because Mezzi and Poloni is from Italy. So if we want to go here and let's say, no. No, no, no. 50 ohm connectors. That's what I was looking for. So here's all the connectors that they have. Now, these aren't adapters. These are connectors. I, um, there's a... Okay, so adapters there. Okay, there are some adapters. So we've got VNC type adapters to PL59, that kind of stuff. Anything you order at Messi.it, if you use the coupon code of KC5HWB, it will save you 5%. So if you want to order from the USA, Gigaparts carries most of this stuff, 70 to 80% of this stuff. But if they're sold out or if it's something on the Messi and Plomi website that Gigaparts doesn't have, you can order directly from Messi.it and use the coupon code KC5HWB. KC5HWB, it will save you 5% from them as well. That's a new thing that Stefano offered to me that I could offer to you. He was at Hamvention. I did an interview with him. Hopefully you guys saw that, that episode on the channel. Go back and watch that if you didn't. But he explains a lot of he doesn't talk much about adapters and connectors, but he does explain a lot of the different types of coax. We're going to be using all Mezzi and Plumy coax at Field Day this year. Mike, KMRD, he got a bunch of coax before Winter Field Day last year, brought it out. We put connections on it. We used it on the Buddy Hex. We used it on the DX Commander. We used it on one or two other antennas. It works great. Very low loss, lightweight coax, easy to, uh, very flexible coax, easy to, 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 uh, to handle and carry around and, and string out in the field. So we're going to, we're going to have more of that at field day this year because Mike's coming up. He's going to bring most of it back. I've got some of it myself, but uh, but Mike's got the, the majority of it. So so connectors and adapters are something that you're going to want to have. I added those to the store just now. Let's go back here and go uh, refresh that. There we go. And those there. Those BNC to PL259 and or SO239s are the most common ones that I use because I do have several infed half waves that are BNC. Again, all the buddy pole stuff. Every time I put up the buddy hex, I've got to have some sort of B... Actually, I got I got ABR coax, who's in Texas. I got them to make me a 50-foot run that has a BNC on one end and a uh, PL259 on the other end so I can just go direct out of my radio into the hex beam. So I'm going to... Might be kind of... Uh, kind of uh, dinking around with that as well uh, a little bit also just arrived do they have crimpless connectors crimpless as in like solder only i think that's pretty much all mezzi and plumy does is solder only i don't know if they have crimp connectors um but the evo po the evolution or what they call evo po 259s that uh, mezzi and plumy has are are solder on they're not crimp connectors so you said crimpless I don't know if you meant crimp connectors, but uh, but yeah. <laughs> Jeremy's in the chat. If you want to get on Jason's field day list, buy beer or whiskey for him. Honestly, I'm not a big whiskey guy. Whiskey guy. I let Frank handle all the whiskey. I do sip on it kind of now and then, but I'm not I'm not real big into hard liquor. So, but there will be whiskey at field day. I, the, have no doubt. Have no doubt about that at all. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Some of these other things, if we go back here to my store, those of you in the RV world, I have this section down here for, uh, let's see, where did it go? These are all my videos. I've got a lot of videos on Amazon for video review stuff. Uh, there's uh, RV camping and off-grid. Kind of an overlap. Okay, that's fine. That Miati battery, Miati battery, I've still got my 6-amp-hour six six Miati battery that I bought three years ago. 
And every time I plug it up to the charger, it's at like 90 or 92%, and it charges right up, and then I use it on some QRP radios, and it works great. This stuff right here, where is that? I thought I put that in here. Maybe I didn't. Uh, okay, no, it's not in there. So those of you who have RV, RV world type stuff, you guys, will, okay, this stuff right here. This, uh, these, yeah, this porta pack deodorizer, you drop that in your in your toilet in your black tank system, and it keeps odors and whatnot from from perpetrating the trailer. I put one of those in there every day that I use the trailer. So <clears throat> you're gonna want to keep something like that if you're gonna have an RV out at field day. If you're going to just be in a tent, then it's not going to matter. These hydration, this tent essentials is for backpacking. It's kind of cool. These hydration packs, these camelbacks are good. Um, we're just going to have bottles of water because we're going to be camping RV style at the, at the hunting lease. But depending on what you're doing, depending on where you're going, if you're going to hike into, if you're going to go out to a national forest and hike into it and camp somewhere in the woods, which would be really fun to do at field day because then you could operate from a national forest, which is probably a POTA spot. And you could operate field day, and you could take your whole field day log and upload it to Parks on the Air and be done. <laughs> That'd be fun. I think I think I want to do that one of these times. We wouldn't be able to do it for field day, but for winter field day, we might go out to Galveston Island State Park one of these times and kind of try it from out there. I think that'd be fun to do. So, uh, cross-channel question. What is a good, decent way to attach a temporary 30-foot mast to the back of an RV? You know what? That's a great question. Um... There are several. So, does the back of your RV have a ladder on it that you can climb up the ladder and get on the roof? If the answer is yes, then there's several companies that make a ladder mounting bracket to attach their antenna to. TN07 is one. Um, Eagle One that I interviewed at Hamvention, they they have one. Uh, you could probably just search Amazon or Google um, RV ladder antenna mount something something. Um, so. You can do it that way if you have a ladder on the back of your RV. My RV does not have a ladder. So what I'm thinking right now is to probably get some sort of clamp or um, something that uh, uh, that attaches to the back bumper is what I'm thinking about doing. I might take it up to like a welding shop and have like a welding something, something built on or attached to my bumper that I can put a like a telescoping pole, like a mast, maybe the carbon fiber mast for gigaparts to hang an infed half wave off of, maybe the TN07 antenna, something like that. I'm going to um, have something mounted back there to the bumper because I don't have a ladder on my RV. So I've, I'm, I'm still kind of researching the answer to that question. And when I have an answer to that question, I will be making a video about it. So there's a couple different options you have, that kind of thing. So it kind of depends on what you've got. I do have some of those ro those drive over mounts that you park on top of and then ha have it put an antenna or a mast in it and and hoist it up. The problem with those on an RV is that it you can't put it on either side of the RV. You can't put one underneath the tire of the RV because on the driver's side of the RV is my slide out living room and it wouldn't and it would be underneath that. On the passenger side of my RV is an awning that I usually put out for sunshade. So it would knock into one of those things if I drove my RV over one of those drive over masks. Those are great for the pickup truck and for the vehicle, not so great for the RV, unless you have an RV without a slide room and then you could use that as well. Who has the hitch mounts? Uh, TN07, let's go look at them real quick. TN07, nope, that's a six, seven out of six. Let's, let's go look at mounts here. Uh, products, RVs, telescoping mast, mast supports. Let's go there. Okay, so they've got these drive over mounts. There's a hitch mount, two and a half inch hitch mount right there. TN07. I'll put this link in the chat. This guy's out of Tennessee, all made in the USA stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, I've done several videos about his products his antennas on my channel. That's what it looks like right there. You could put like a draw tight hitch on the back of your RV and then put one of these hitch mounts in it. Maybe never pull anything with it. You don't want to pull like a Jeep or something behind your RV. Um, but you could put a hitch mount back there and put one of these hitch mount antenna mounts in it and just use it for that if you wanted to. So thank you, Steve. Got that there. Right there. So TN07, uh, Eagle One. These guys were at Dayton Hamvention. 
and I interviewed them. There we go, Eagle One Antenna com. He had except whatever. Eagle One Antenna. There's a tripod. There's a there's a hitch package right there. So there's a hitch package right there. I think that comes with the antenna. I think that's a whole thing there. So you can go check those guys out as well. Josh did a really good video explaining how their antenna works. So go check out uh, Ham Radio Crash Course. He's got a really great um, detailed video explaining the type of antenna they use, how it works, and some some drawbacks with it. Every antenna is a compromised antenna, especially a vertical antenna. Nothing wrong with that. That TN07 is a compromised antenna as well. Uh, but uh, but Josh did a really good video of that, so you guys go check that out as well. Steve, if you have a link to Josh's video, feel free to share that in chat. But Eagle One has a hitch package as well, so you can find you can find a lot of different hitch packages out there for um, receiver hitch, draw tight type hitch, pulling a uh, towing type hitch package that you can mount an antenna in. Once again, uh, for those of you who just joined us, uh, thank you for joining the live stream today. We're talking about field day prep. I do have a link to my Amazon store in the chat. Uh, Amazon store does uh, earn me commissions on qualifying items. So just an FYI, if you don't want to use the link, that's fine. Don't worry. Just go to Amazon.com and search for the products we're talking about today. It's not a problem. But if you do want to use the link, it does help support the channel. And I've got a field day 2022 section on my channel now that I just put in the chat. So go check that out if you want to. It's your choice. So let's see if I can get uh, antenna hitch mount. I don't know if that's even a thing. Oh, not really. That's not what I'm looking for. There we go. Thank you, Steve. Steve just shared a link to Josh's video for the Eagle One antennas that he recorded. He recorded an a short interview with them at field day, and then he explains how their antenna works. I thought he did a very good job with it. So, no, this isn't what I'm looking for. But I'm seeing these antennas right here on on, uh, on Amazon, and I'm reminded of the fact that I have Starlink now. I have Starlink now. So one video, and I don't know if I'm going to post this on Ham Radio 2.0 or if I'm going to post this on the Unplugged channel. I do a lot of cross-promotion. When I pro post up new videos on the new channel, I will post links about it on my Ham Radio 2.0 stuff. And I share it sometimes in my Friday shopping video. Be sure to check out my Friday shopping videos if you guys haven't done that. But I have a Starlink system. In fact, Starlink just came out with this thing called RV. If you go to starlink.com forward slash RV, this is their portable system. Now, it tells you if you, if you look, <coughs> it tells you it does not work while you're driving down the road. So if you've got it like a motorhome, or you just want it, you don't have an RV at all, and you just, I just want portable internet. If you mount it to your vehicle and take off down the highway, it's not guaranteed to work. I haven't tried it yet to see if it actually works or not. It's not meant for that. What it's meant for is it's meant to, whenever you get destinated in the woods, in field day, overlanding, camping, state park, whatever, when you get destinated, you put up this dish and you have interwebs. So I tested it in my backyard. It worked pretty good. Um, that day uh, was a was a cloudy day, and they say clouds shouldn't affect it. Okay, okay, I, I'm gonna do my own testing to 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 see how accurate that is. Um, but we are gonna use this at field day, and fingers crossed, it'll work good enough to live stream. I'm gonna live stream Saturday afternoon at field day. So, but I'm at least gonna record a couple of videos about it, get some screenshots, do some speed tests, that kind of thing. So Starlink for RVs will be used at field day, and uh, you guys will see videos on that upcoming. So I'm really interested to see how well it works actually out in the field because the one of the things I wanted to buy this system for was my Galveston house because the Internet options down there are terrible. Uh, they have a system called Xfinity, and while some people say Xfinity is good, I guess maybe I'm too far west or too far south on the island of Galveston to have good connections. Fiber is not an option. I cannot get fiber down there. And Xfinity is is terrible. You know, I'm supposed to get a 185 megabyte down package, and usually I get about half that down and maybe four or five megs up. It's junk compared to what I have right here. I'm streaming right now on a Frontier fiber system that's 500, gig, 500 megs up and down. And I could I could upgrade it to one gigabyte up and down if I really wanted to. I'm just like, 
I don't need it. 500 megs is plenty. So, uh, so I'm not really expecting Starlink to be that fast. But I know a couple guys with Starlink who've used it, and they're, and they're sending me screenshots of their speed test. And I'm like, dude, that's, you know, they're getting 50 to 100 up and two to 100 to 300 down. And I'm like, that's plenty. If you're out in the woods getting that kind of internet speed, that is great. So looking forward to trying that. That's, a, that's, another, that's another thing. Yeah, so Kyle's correct. Use that Starlink on a Gigaparts fiber mask with a pole mount to get it above the trees. So Gigaparts, um, they have one of these systems. They have one of these RV systems. My throat's getting dry. They have one of these RV systems, and they sent me a picture, and they said, hey, take the top five sections out of your 50-foot mast, which that's about 25 feet, I think, and the RV, and the, the, mounting, the mount that comes with the Starlink RV fits perfectly into the sixth section down, perfectly. So they're going to start marketing it that way, I think. So you put your mast up, Extend it all the way, carbon fiber mast, and you've got, you know, an RV, a, uh, a Starlink dish, 25, 30 feet in the air. That's pretty slick. <laughs> Somebody's calling me spam, it says spam risk. So, so that's, 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 that's pretty slick. So we're going to be doing some testing with that as well. Um, let's see, south of Galveston, I thought Galveston was at the end of the earth. Not even close, man. South Padre Island's at the end of the earth, or the end of Texas. Uh, but anyway, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, so Starlink's going to be used at field day for sure. Uh, let's go back over here. So, some other stuff that I added in here was, um, you know, I might try, to, my problem with field day is, is, um, my problem with field day is I take too much stuff to do videos about. Um, I take way too much stuff to do, and I end up not getting around to all of it. So I would like to take some GMRS stuff out and do some range testing on it, but I don't know if I'm going to actually get around to all that or not because I've got I've got field day videos to make. I've got a Starlink video to make. I've got a solar. I've got two or three solar videos to make. So I'm like, you know what? I'm not waiting on the GMRS stuff and, and see. We'll see. Steve, I am drinking a Coca-Cola because it's noon in Texas. So to answer your question. Oh, okay. Let's see. Xfinity is fine as long... You know, I've heard a lot of people say that, Scott, and I, and I have to all, only assume that you're correct because on the beach, it sucks. So I'm going to try to use the Starlink connection. We're going to be d back down to Galveston. Um, June, July, and August are our, our peak rental times for the vacation rental property down there. And we're going to be back down there in uh, in Labor Day, le end of August, shortly after the Huntsville Ham Fest, by the way. I hope you guys are planning on coming to the Huntsville Ham Fest, uh, everybody in the chat right now. So we're going to be back down there at Labor Day. I'm going to take the Starlink down there and do some testing with it down there on the beach, too. We'll see how it works down there. So you're probably going to see multiple Starlink videos upcoming on the channel. So Amazon sells two-inch receivers, trail, trail mounts if needed. Choose the one appropriate... Trail mounts. Receivers trail mounts. Don, do you have a link for that? I'm not sure what your... Uh, hit two-inch two receivers trail mounts. Not sure what that means. Uh, kind of like... Well, okay. Something like that, maybe? I don't know what a trail mount receiver hitch is. I'm sorry. Maybe I should know what that is, but I don't. There's one right there. That's kind of neat. If you've got it linked on, share that link in the chat. You've got moderation privileges, so be, uh, feel free to do that. Because I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not following exactly what you're saying, but uh, but that's okay. Uh -uh. All right. When are you going to have time to radio? That's a good question. Good. You got field day is only Saturday one from 1 p.m. to Sunday 1 p.m. So I'm going down Thursday morning. So Thursday morning we're going to do some setup. I'm going to set up the solar the solar system. I say solar system and I think of like the galaxy. So I'm going to set up the solar panel system and batteries and controllers and do some videos on Thursday. 
Um, Friday, we'll probably bring some guns and blow some stuff up. That's typically what we do. It's a fun time. And uh, <laughs> uh, it's um, Hitch Trailer. Okay, thanks, Don. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So what? What I, I I plan to do most of my videos. Probably do the Starlink video Friday morning, something like that. Plan to do most of my videos either Thursday or Friday because I'll be out there for a solid two days, two and a half days before field day ever starts. Now we got to get our antenna set up. I made the mistake last time of setting up the the uh, the hex beam too late, so I set it up. We operated all day on Saturday. Sunday morning we got up. The weather was kind of crap. People were tired. I think might might have been a little bit too much of Grandpa's cough medicine last night, um, and we didn't operate for very long before we started tearing down. So I the, the hex beam was set up for like twenty twenty eight to thirty hours was all. So this year I'm going to set it up early. I'm going to set up earlier again, like I have done in the past. I don't want to set it up and tear it down that quickly. It's it's not fun. So um, so I'm going to to do that, but should have plenty of time to, to do some video stuff before field day ever starts. I wanted to ask, what size is Huntsville ham vest in the big three? It's seven hours for me considering the trip. So Brent, Huntsville's number three. Okay, the, the biggest is Hamvention, obviously. Uh, the second biggest is Orlando, and the third biggest is Huntsville. That's inside of the United States. Okay, Hamvention's actually the biggest ham fest in the world. Hamcation in Orlando and Frederick Chauvin, I think, are somewhat neck and neck, something like that. Frederick Chauvin uh, in Germany, which is actually the same weekend as Field Day weekend. But if you're talking about in the USA, Huntsville is the third largest show in the USA. And they had a fantastic turnout last year because it was the first major show to happen post-COVID. So we had a really good turnout out there. They were very welcoming of all the YouTubers to come out and uh, you know promote their show, which we all had a really fun time doing that. They have offered us a forum room again this this coming year for 2022. We're going to have our own forum again, which we're just going to so sit down and talk to people. We did that last year. It was really fun. I've already got my RV spot reserved on Montesano State Park, which is about a 15 or 20 minute drive from the convention up on the side of a mountain. And it's great because we were in a pavilion on Friday night. We did last year. We probably do that again. And uh, we hang out, um, you know, drink some beer, and it's inside of a state park. So at least one person has a radio set up, and we can activate POTA all weekend long. So we're probably going to get there like Wednesday afternoon-ish, something like that. Uh, yeah, probably Wednesday afternoon. And... Um, set up everything and and get uh you know get the trailer set up get the rv set up get an antenna thrown in the air and then we're going to activate poda the entire time and we're going to leave out i think i don't remember if we're leaving sunday or monday but we'll be there for several nights in the state park for the huntsville ham fest fantastic show really uh really enjoyed that show last year uh where will you be transmitting from the hunt camp in relation to dallas we're about um, 50-ish miles north as the crow flies, 50-ish, 50-ish miles north of Dallas. Um, it might be closer to 60. It's basically due west of Bowie, Texas, if you know where Bowie, Texas is. Look up Bowie, Texas on the map and look east. And did I say west? I meant east. It's due east of Bowie, Texas. Bowie is west of us. That's what I meant to say. So look up on the map, look up Bowie, Texas, and then look over to the right-hand side of Bowie, and that's basically where we are. You can see that there. So, Dale, I'm not sure what you're talking about. I assume you're talking to somebody else in the chat, which is fine. Uh, but you brought up the uh, All-Star Bridge. I will have my All-Star Sherry node running at the hunting lease for field day. <coughs> so it'll be connected back to the hub here, and my hub is 43136. So if you guys have access to All-Star during field day, please uh, please connect to All-Star and, uh, and talk to us. DX Commander in the house. Welcome, Callum. Good evening to you, sir. We'll get Callum back on the channel one of these days. He, uh, is, Yeah, it is evening for him, so it, it works out well that I do this at lunchtime, my time, and it's evening for him. It's always good to have uh, Callum on there. Uh, here you go, Jason. Look for the flagpole hitch mount on Amazon. Flagpole... Hitch mount. There we go. Thanks, Jeremy. 
There we go. Hey, look at that. Check that out. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and you could put, like, obviously, you could put, like, a freaking uh, mast of some sort in there. Maybe a DX Commander mast, since he's in the house right now. <laughs> I'll put this, I'll drop this in the, uh, stop it. Drop this in the store, field day. Put that in there. So you could do something like that. Oh, there's one. Hey, you know what? There's a double flagpole. So you can put up a flag and an antenna. Look at that. <laughs> That's freaking awesome. But, uh, yeah, you could do like a flagpole type mount. That's a good idea. And then if you're not going to um, if you're not gonna actually pull something with it, then, you know, it doesn't have to be real heavy duty. You just mount this to the back of your, your RV and put, uh, put your push-up pole or your antenna mast or something into that hitch mount every time you get stopped and destinated in the RV spot. Uh... Did you make ever? Uh, did you ever make it up to Maine? No, no, have not made it up to Maine yet. My schedule really got away from me this year. Um, was gonna really, really want to do a trip to Maine and just flat out did not get it on the calendar this year. So, but it is still in the works. It's still in the works. We're gonna do that trip. Just don't know when yet. Okay. Maybe operating from buoy myself. Oh, cool, Scott. Good deal. Good deal, good deal, good deal. It's a nice area up there. Nice area. It's hot, but uh, but I like being out there. It's nice and woody, wooded, wooded trees, and um, cool, uh, cool place to hang out. Make sure the diameter is large enough to... To accommodate a roan, I assume you mean a roan push-up pole. But yes, yes, good, uh, good call on that. Uh, Andy's in the house. Hey, Andy, how are you? Good to see you in the chat today. Let's see. Does someone know the exact dimensions of the USA square hitch? I think there's different sizes of it, man. Oh, you mean the receiver hitch? I can find out. I've got one on my truck. I'll I'll measure it and um, I'll measure. I'll give it to you in inches if that's okay, Callum. But I'll measure it today and send it to you. Yes, Don, we will do K. No, it's it's not K one thousand. It well, if you're talking about Maine, if you're talking about Maine, it's not K one thousand. It's K zero 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 one. It's one. I think one thousand is in. Illinois, because ham radio dude Sean, he did K one thousand just the other day. Um, so two by two. Yes, Don. Yeah, you corrected it. Gotcha. Uh, two by two. People are saying it's two by two. Um, I can go measure mine and take a picture of the measuring tape on the hitch. Two by two does sound correct. I think those guys are probably correct. I don't know that I've ever actually measured mine. But, Callum, if you create something, ship me a prototype, man. We'll talk about it on the channel, and I'll use it on some videos. Because that'd be cool. That'd be cool. The problem with that, the well, yeah, the problem with my using it is that if I'm pulling my RV, I can't use it. But if I'm going out to do POTA just in the truck, it's perfect. It's great. I've used something similar to that before, and and they do, they do work well. So, um... Yeah, that's a good option, and I and I'm I'm considering putting some sort of trailer hitch mount on the back of my RV to do just exactly that, to put a pole up on some sort of either push-up pole or antenna vertical antenna mast or something like that. It's actually called a two-inch receiver, yeah, and a two-by-four is called a two-by-four, but it's not actually two inches by four inches. So, Callum's trying to get exact measurements. I understand where he's coming from, where he's coming with that. So, yeah, we'll get we'll get you an exact measurement. <laughs> I need to build the DX Commander antenna first before what? Before main? Uh, may maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> Funny. 
Uh, here, here come the jokes. Here come the jokes about the DX Commander. Mm. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so. Anyway. All right, once again, guys, we're talking about field day prep. We're just about done. We've been going almost an hour. This is the... Well, I'll just put that link in the chat. This is the, the link, once again to my Amazon store where I can earn commissions from qualifying items. This is a list of field day items. If you don't want to use my Amazon store, if you just want to go to Amazon, that's totally fine. It's no problem at all. But the Amazon store does help to support this channel. Um, Amazon, uh, Amazon announced that they're doing Prime Day again, and it's going to be next month sometime in July. They haven't, they haven't given the exact date yet, but it will be in July. So, going to do some live streams for Prime Day the same way we did last year. So, uh, once again, you guys be sure to check out um, Kyle's channel because he's going to be doing a trivia Friday night, two days from now, at 7 p.m. And then uh, when he's done, he'll go for an hour, and then when, he, when he's done with that, we will be having our monthly ham radio happy hour. So, and I got a couple of special guests that I've invited onto this happy hour. And looking forward to it. So all of you who in the chat, um, I sent an email. I actually sent my email early this month. So I, uh, the invites to everybody, to all of the of the get the Zoom guests has gone out. If you didn't get it, let me know. Hit me up in Discord. But if you've ever been on the happy hour before, you are invited back. Um, the Zoom link should be the same. And uh, everybody's, everybody's welcome to join us. So... Uh, Thanks a lot, guys, for joining us today. I will put all the links we talked about today into the description. So those of you who were not able to join us live, those of you who are uh, joining us on Team Replay, um, check the description for the links, including my Amazon store, TN07, Eagle One, and a couple other links we talked about. I'll put all those in the chat, um, or in the description, I should say. Put a comment on this video if you think I should include something else. I'll be looking over some other things, some other items, and adding uh, items to this list as the week progresses towards field day. So if you think I should add something, put it in the comments below, and uh, we will see you guys. Hope to see you guys on the air. Hope to hear you guys on the air at field day. Hope to see you in uh, the trivia and the happy hour on Friday, 73 to all. Y'all have a good afternoon. <laughs>